Good morning, folks. Today we're going over several items in space weather. We'll keep checking in on Storm Sarah in the Caribbean. We've got an outstanding article on not needing dark matter and a fantastic look at what it should take to get equatorial auroras. But we're starting with the last 24 hours on our star and we find that it was another relatively quiet day. Solar flaring remains low. Plasma filaments are very stable. The only minor pops were around the limbs and not aimed at Earth. Solar wind is calm here as well, so let's take a look at the X-ray flux to see that M-class flaring has now disappeared more than 24 hours in C-class range of X-ray production, and that quiet complements the plasma filament activity or lack thereof. Look how calm and stable the plasma ropes are right now. They are massive, but they appear to have managed to find their magnetic nests within the corona. We should expect solar flaring to remain low here today with a lack of complex sunspots. Closest thing to that is the departing one on the right. Next chance to hit the expected Riger cycle uptick would be from the incoming active regions. You can see the bright field arcs at the limb. We'll be keeping watch here today and tomorrow to see what's coming over the limb into view. That uptick cycle should be kicking in before the end of the month. We'll have eyes on it. Quick return to the Caribbean here where Sarah is causing major mudslide and flooding effects in the northern parts of Central America. Many models still have the system crossing over into the Gulf, and so we're still keeping an eye on that to see if more alerts need to come to the U.S. coastlines. Let's go now to galactic physics and cosmology where a look at the Milky Way dynamics reveals we might be able to debunk dark matter right here in our cosmic neighborhood, in addition to the many distant problems of space and light and time. It's true that much of the problems of the Lambda Cold Dark Matter model can be found right here in our galaxy. Excellent look at one of the popular alternatives here. It's not my personal favorite alternative, but it is a solid reason to look outside the box. Last but not least, an interesting paper on what it should take to see auroras at the equator. What's interesting is they suggest it would take a solar storm of Carrington level, more than three times greater magnetospheric disruption than what hit Earth in May of 2024. The problem is, that storm, and even the much weaker one in October, produced aurora in the tropics, almost to the equator. As we've said, these smaller storms are coming closer and closer to doing what we expect from much grander solar storms, and it's because we're in the midst of a magnetic pole shift. Our planetary shield is weakening. Folks, four big events coming up at the ranch here, not to mention smaller meet and greets on a weekly basis. Pick a date, come out and see us, observerranch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here but right now at 6 a.m in the new valley of the sun eyes open no fear be safe everyone